So I was contacted by this company called Sane Smart, and they offered me a 3D printer. And I thought about it, but I already have a pretty good 3D printer, so I told them I wasn't interested. But when I was poking around on their website, I did come across this CNC router, and it definitely caught my attention. I told them I'd be interested in the router, and to my surprise, they said yes. So this is the Genmitsu Prover XL 4030V2. And I figured I'd start this video with a full unboxing. So if you want to watch this, you'll see me unboxing absolutely everything that came in the box. I will say everything was well packaged, nothing showed up damaged, and it showed up very quickly, especially considering I'm in Canada. This is the control unit. You got a variable speed knob for the spindle. All the ports are at the front. E-stop, a couple good clicky buttons. That's the Z-axis, or the Z-axis if you're in Canada. And it also has a ball screw. That was my main draw to this machine, was the ball screws. That's the X-axis, more ball screws. My current CNC router, the X-Carve, is belt-driven. And belts are fine for a lot of things, but not the things I want to do. So there's the X-Motor and a couple brackets that hold up the drag chains. I can finally get the base unit out of the box. It's heavy, but it's manageable. And all the wiring there. Everything came pre-terminated, so it was really easy to install and 100% idiot-proof. And all the wires were cut to the right length to make for a clean install. Get out of here. First real look at the base of the unit. You can see the integrated T-slots. More ball screws. The underside's all aluminum. Nice and sturdy. Nice and stiff. I followed the instruction manual page by page, step by step. And the first step is to make sure that the two rails are aligned perfectly. Mine weren't, so a couple quick turns with the screwdriver they provided and everything was good. That's a little more refined than the method I used to align my X-Carve. No issues with the hardware. In fact, they give you one extra piece of hardware for each one of those little trays. I assembled everything loose before tightening it down properly at the end. Z-axis going on. This is the fourth CNC router that I've had the pleasure of assembling, and it's by far the easiest. Even with setting up my camera and getting all these shots, the assembly only took an hour, maybe just over. Next is the X-axis stepper motor and the little coupler. You can see how beefy those stepper motors are. They're about twice as long as the X-carved stepper motors. And a set screw ties it to the ball screw. Laid out the cables here. This is in preparation for the drag chains. Those little brackets that I'm attaching right now hold onto the drag chain. I got one of them wrong. I can't remember which one. Maybe that one. I had to swap it, but it was very easy to see the mistake. And everything starts looking good and tidy. Speaking of mistakes, this is the only mistake I found in the manual. It says two. Should say four. Now I just have to plug the labeled wires into the labeled motors. These are closed loop stepper motors, so there's two sets of wires for each motor. Plug in the Z axis, and then the two wires onto the spindle. And I can plug the other end of the wires into the control unit. I probably could have approached this a little bit more methodically. It was a bit of a tangled mess, but it's functional for now. I can't imagine it would have been much better. And there's the first fire up. There are lots of choices for control software, and it doesn't matter if you're using a Mac or a PC. I'm actually using a browser-based software called Easel, which is what you're supposed to use with the X-Carve to control the machine and send it through a homing cycle right now. Before I let the chips fly, I wanted a dust shoe, so I 3D printed this little adapter ring that bolts onto the spindle. And I can use this old dust shoe I had kicking around. I need a space a little bit closer to the vacuum. Found one. That'll do. That's a block of Corian clamped down to the table. The T-slots make clamping very easy. Now I'm Z-probing the roughing bit. This is going to end up being three operations. First a roughing pass, and I'm going to switch to a V-bit, do the detail work, and then an eighth inch bit to do the perimeter cut. This is going to be a print block of my print shop logo. And we're off to a good start. Everything's looking really crisp at this point. I'm happy. There it is sped up. This has nearly done the roughing pass. I can't remember how long it took to do this. It wasn't too long. It's a quick machine. And at this stage, everything's looking good. This is exactly what I want to see. No complaints. I need to use two wrenches to change the bit. It doesn't have a lock like a router would. And I'm going to load this V bit in there. If I remember correctly, that's 30 degrees. It came with the machine. Some more cutting action. Again, everything looking good. Finished up that. I honed it out of the way just so I could see and 
Upon initial inspection, everything looked good. Now, everything wasn't good on this one. I'm going to spoil that. I'll go into detail in a minute here, but... My initial thoughts were that everything looked great. Everything was not great, and I did figure out the cause. So, for now, we'll just finish this up, cut it out. Everything else was looking good. I did cut into the spoil board a little, but who cares. Since I was under the impression that everything was good, I really wanted to push this machine test at the limit, so I made this tiny little leather A that had a lot of intricate details. It was while carving this that I realized something's not right. It wasn't looking as crisp as I expected it to be. So I combed through the footage that I had recorded, trying to find a root cause, and it didn't take me long to find it, and uh, I'll show you here. But first, I'm going to switch over to a macro lens, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, what I'm not happy with. You can see those little steps all along the edges of the letters, and all of those should have been cleaned up with the V bit. So clearly something's off, whether it was the roughing pass, or my orientation, or the V bit itself, but I, that doesn't even look that bad, but it's a hot mess. So it turns out it's a Z probe issue. So this is what it should look like. The bit comes down, contacts and raises right away. No issues. But since the V bit has less surface area at the tip, it has to push harder to make that contact. And you'll see it. It dances around. And that's the issue. This is the same design cut in the same material with the same bit. But this time I set the Z height manually. And you can see it's absolutely perfect. There are no issues, no steps, everything is as you'd expect. And more impressively, look at how crisp that is. That's 1 16th inch for scale. Look at the size of those dots. And it's black because I was impatient. I used an ink pad to try it out. But you can't have as many printing presses as I do and just hand stamp something. So I mounted them to this plywood backer board. And then I used some coins to lock them into a chase. That's a chase. And this is going to go into Louise. Let's see Louise. Oh, you beauty. The chase locks into the printing press with a little lever at the top. Holds everything in place. And I'm going to use black oil-based ink. The alternative to oil-based ink would be rubber-based ink, and there's some benefits to that stuff, but I don't have any. All my stuff is oil-based. Look at how silky smooth that is, like velvet. Because this is a test print, there was no point in inking up Louise. I just hand-rolled it on with a brayer. You can see how much the ink makes the letters pop. The little A is mounted below the logo. You can see it there. Engage the press. Load some paper. Didn't worry about alignment. I just want to see ink on paper. Quick little kiss. It's looking good. Looking very good. I'll zoom in now. Back to the macro. These are the results I was after. This is what my X-Carve was unable to do. Those tiny little dots. All those fine lines. I was unable to do it with a belt-driven machine. And this machine does it great. Except for that little Z-Probe issue. And if you have any recommendations, I'm all ears. Here's my logo. And again, you can see how crispy everything is. With my X-Carve, the issue is most notable on the inside corner of text. The corners wouldn't be 90 degrees. They'd be blown out. Like around this T, those little points there. Here, they're perfect. They're not blown out at all. This gives me such a thrill to be able to achieve results like this. I know it's very basic print, but this opens the doors for a lot of other work that I wanted to do, but my CNC wasn't capable. That's pretty much it for the unboxing and initial testing of this machine. My next video, I'm going to test the limits a little further, do some 3D carving and some different materials. But there's been a slight change to the setup uh, of this area since I filmed this clip. Let me cut to that real quick. That's right. For the first time in 10 years, I do not have an X-Carve in my shop. On to newer, smaller, and different things. Thanks for watching.